Hey team, Chef Eric here, hope you're doing well. Uh, it's a known fact that seafood gets short in the stick when it comes to butchery. All right, we've all had pork shanks and beef shanks, but when was the last time you saw a salmon shank? Well, it's my distinct privilege to introduce to you the Quarry Arctic Super Salmon Shank. So today we're gonna be roasting this shank on the Kamada Joe, absolutely beautiful. We're also gonna be doing a garlic parsley emulsion, a carrot ginger miso sauce, a Brazilian white bean and shoo shoo salad. Don't forget to look for those superfoods. I'm throwing a competition out there. Uh, just a hint, there are more than 10 superfoods in this video. Let's see how many you can come up with. Let's get into the action. First thing, let's get into the garlic parsley emulsion. We're gonna have to get into two culinary terms here, blanching and shocking. Uh, right here, as you see, I'm blanching the parsley, really setting in those colors, and then I'm gonna shock that bunch of parsley right in the ice water, locking it all in. Next, wring out the water, rip it up with your hands, and reserve. We're gonna do the same exact thing with spinach. There's an awful lot of chlorophyll in that spinach and some great nutrients and flavor. So by blanching that, again, we're locking in those colors. Go ahead and drain it out in the chinois, and then let's get some ice water in there. Boom, cool it down, wring it out. And the reason we're wringing this out is because we don't want all that water in our sauce, diluting the flavor, diluting the color. Okay, throw a little bit of garlic in there, and let's get our food processor set up. We're gonna knock in a little bit of 50-50 canola oil and olive oil. I, found that, I find that's a great oil with a neutral flavor and we're just gonna incorporate all of our ingredients in there. Now the blades are just chop, chop, chopping, accessing all that cellular structure, all that, all that beautiful chlorophyll that's locked in the cellular structure of those greens. A little bit of salt goes a long way just for flavor. And we're gonna reserve this in the refrigerator for 30 minutes to even, well, for about an hour to a day. And that's gonna lock in that beautiful, bright, vibrant green color while we're letting that parsley garlic emulsion reserve let's go ahead and start on a brazilian white bean and chayote salad chayote is one of those fruits from the old world uh, you see it in a lot of latin american cuisines to me it's kind of like a like a like a pear apple if you will uh, really nice textural uh, mouthfeel and that's going to go great with some citrus so let's go ahead and get into some uh, limes there. We're going to use some juice of some limes. Next, we're going to go in with some Supremes. God, knocking in all kinds of crazy terms here. Going over all kinds of great culinary terms. This is the Supreme. All right, pretty much all we're doing is getting rid of any of the non-edible pieces of an orange, right? Anything that would give your digestive system any trouble at all. Seeds or the, uh, the exterior, the pith, or even those little lines that hold the segments together. Let's get to chopping some red onion in there. You know I'm a huge fan of the red onion. Mm, 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 mm. Mint, all day long. Bright, vibrant, and minty. Kind of gives it that, that, that effort, not effervescent, kind of gives it that menthol-y feel. Uh, something that, that when you bite into mint with other vegetables and fruits, it just elevates the game a little. And we'll pick some other herbs in there as well. Let's get some parsley in there for good measure, some cilantro, and of course scallions. Good old green onions. Big bold flavors. This just screams fresh. Oh, I love it. Big bold citrus, starchy vegetables, fresh cracked pepper, little salt, give it a toss. A little slow-mo just for fun. <laughs> oh, keep it in the bowl, chef. Keep it in the bowl. All right, let's move on to our white bean. We're gonna start out with a, uh, a little bit of white onion or yellow onion there. We're gonna core out some vine ripe tomatoes from the garden and we're gonna dice those up. I like, to, I like to start with cutting sections and then coming down on those sections and we've got a nice medium dice there. Come in with a little bit of chives, chop up some fresh parsley, pick a little thyme. All right, we're gonna heat up our cast iron to 350 degrees and we're gonna sweat these onions. Really aromatic. We're not looking for color here. Another culinary term, sweat, okay? Get the garlic in there, same deal. We're not trying to get a bunch of color. Once it starts getting color, let's knock in some of those uh, navy beans. And then we're gonna add some of those tomatoes to deglaze. 
Now we're just heating this up, okay? We're not really cooking it per se. We just wanna bring some flavor to it. Now go ahead and brush in those fresh herbs. All right, we're gonna heat everything up in this pan just to wake everybody up and bring all these flavors, just activate everybody, okay? Let's go ahead and reserve that. Now it's time for us to jump back to our parsley emulsion, our garlic spinach parsley emulsion. We're pouring it through some cheesecloth there that's gonna catch all of those larger pieces and just let the colorful oil drain through. Remember, all we're trying to get out of this garlic parsley emulsion is big, bold flavors, bit of nutrients, and some amazing color contrast. All right, let's go ahead and get started on our carrot ginger miso sauce. Roast some carrots until they're nice and soft. It's gonna pick up some smoky flavors too, I love it. You know, that's an underrated thing right there, just a grilled carrot or glazed carrots. Uh, stunning. Don't worry about chopping them up too nice and neat, we're just gonna pitch them in a blender anyway, food processor. Go in with the vinegar, go in with the miso, pickled ginger juice, sriracha, olive oil, canola oil blend, and we're mixing up a beautiful vinaigrette. Look at this, Quarry Arctic Whole Salmon. Sustainably raised, beautiful stuff. We're just gonna take off some of these scales towards the tail end. Remember, this is gonna be a shank, so this is a pretty unique cut right here. Pay attention, folks. We measured in about four to five inches off the tail, and then we're gonna come back about two inches, and just with a chop, we take off the tail fin. Now we're gonna trim away the flesh from the bone, revealing the last bit of bone before the tail. And again, that's two to three inches there. Do not throw away that meat. That is, that is little sandwiches all day long. Those are salmon sliders right there. All right, now we're gonna clean up the sides of the bone. Just a little knife work. You can use a pair of scissors if you like. And we're pretty much Frenching it. Think about a shank. Think about your pork shank. Think about your, 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 uh, your veal or your beef shank. So we're gonna clean that up a little bit. Now you're getting the idea. Just a unique way to fabricate the latter end of this amazing, sustainably raised salmon. Now I'm gonna use a pair of shears and just clip off this little fin here. Look at that, folks. French salmon shank. How fun is that? We'll get our cast iron in there, let it heat up a little bit, touch of oil, and I'm gonna cut a couple X's in each side of these. Now it's gonna look cool, but it's also gonna let some of the seasoning and some of the garlic chili paste penetrate that skin and get in there and really, really get to work on doing some seasoning and some caramelizing. So just a little knife work on each side, but I do wanna leave the skin on this thing. Bit of salt, season all sides. Look at that, two gorgeous shanks. And there's our garlic chili sauce, and we're just gonna take that with our glove on and just kinda rub all over. Go hard, team. Once we've got each side generously coated with our garlic chili sauce, we're gonna get into that 400 degree grill and set those shanks right inside that pan. We're gonna start them standing up Again, this is a pretty unusual cut, so uh, give me a break. We're doing this for the first time. It's absolutely amazing. This is fun stuff. I don't know what we're going to do with these tail pieces, but I have a feeling they're going to come in handy, and I just want to eat them. I love it. So many great pieces of the fish end up in the bin, and it's just so unfortunate. Look how gorgeous that's coming up. Oh, my gosh. Yes, please. Let's pull those tails off and just give them to crisp up a little more and give us a little more real estate. This pan's probably a little too small, but that's all right. I, wanna, I just want to get a little more even cooking on some of these thicker portions. Time to mix the two salads, the Brazilian white bean and the shushu. That's spelled X-U-X-U. Fun to spell, fun to say, and even more fun to eat. Mix it up. Super salad. Beep, beep, beep. That's what I'm talking about. Think how good that's gonna be with that chili garlic roasted salmon on top. Lights out good. Okay, oh my gosh, look at the caramelization. Remember, we're at about 450 degrees there. There's some good airflow cycling through, so it's almost like a convection oven. Paint on a little bit more of that garlic chili. If you like the heat, put it on, put it on. Dab a little dabble do ya, little dabble do ya. All right, so while that's finishing up, let's go ahead and start thinking again about plate architecture. So I'm gonna start with that vibrant uh, carrot ginger miso. Oh, and this is just such a good salad dressing. If you don't wanna use it for this, use it for anything. Um, there's that emulsion, pretty stuff. Little, little chili oil around the outside. 
and the Brazilian white bean shushu salad right on top. Nice little bed of that. I'm thinking we might have to use, and let's go ahead and do it, let's go ahead and use the uh, crisp salmon tails on the bottom to kind of give ourselves a platform to sit the shank on top. And that'll help it kind of, that'll help us get it to the table without it toppling over. My servers always love me for my tall tower creations. Uh, that, you know, they're trying to bounce and get to the table. But look how cool it is. That's a, that's a statement piece right there, all right? That is a bit the X. Oh, let's go ahead and add some alfalfa sprouts. Hint, hint, that might be a superfood, okay? Walnuts around the outside, you know that's gonna be good. Another textural contrast, stunning dish. Super salmon shank off the Kamada Joe. So folks, if you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment, let us know what's going on. Uh, that's the salmon shank. You know, there's so many fun things you can do uh, with seafood that just haven't been done yet. They're never gonna invent a new cut of fish, so start getting creative with it. Join us at Kamada Joe as we continue to explore the culinary world. Uh, from my backyard to yours, cheers team. Thank you.